All right, guys, so today I'm going to be bringing you a video on how I made my hanging kit for my Radeon lights. I'm going to go over what I used and how we did it. First off, start with our lights. Then we're going to use a drill. We're going to need a drill bit for that drill to drill our holes into our angle iron, our aluminum angle iron, some D-rings, some toggle bolts. Going to be using these things. Oh, sorry. Um, this is a picture hanging wire and that one's rated for 100 pounds. And then we're going to be using these uh, things called Dana Clips or Dana Tight. Um, and they're specifically made for suspension wire. Um, give you an idea of what they look like. This is what they are here. It has slots so you can put in two pieces of wire or make a loop out of it. And they're fully adjustable. Um, I use those for hanging uh, air handlers and stuff. So uh, we're going to need a tape measure hacksaw to cut our angle iron and of course we're going to be using the Radeon eyelet bolts and the star of the show the aluminum angle bracket stuff and a screwdriver um, that's uh, the materials we're going to need so what I did here is I put a piece of plywood over the top of the tank and then laid the lights over the top of the tank. This is giving me a really good idea of exactly where I want to put the lights on the tank and it gives me a stable platform to work with while I'm uh, measuring distances between the holes and all of that stuff. Um, so yeah, I'm just kind of giving you guys a shot of what it looks like with the plywood and the lights on the tank. Um, each one of the lights is uh, seven and a half inches off the corners of the tank and about nine inches apart. Alrighty, so here we're going to start taking some measurements of the light fixtures. I'm going to be working with the first two holes here. Um, I kind of took the idea also from Bulk Reef Supply. They have a video on this, but I'm using the first two bolts um, so my buttons are not covered up. Even though I don't have any plans on using the buttons, um, the Gen 3 buttons are really nice. Uh, the Gen 2 buttons really suck. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to measure a half an inch past um, the actual holes. Um, that way I have a little bit of a distance or a... Um, um, a little bit of, I don't even know what to call it, but so I have a little bit of an edge at the end, that way my uh, my holes aren't right at the edge of my cut. So I'm going with um, 12 and a half inches here, and now I'm going to go ahead and make that cut onto my first piece of angle iron. I'm just going to call it angle iron even though it's aluminum. I'll measure it, and I forgot to tell you guys that bring a pen, a marker, or a pencil, or a scribing tool. So we're going to go ahead and uh, fast forward the heck out of this. I ended up needing to change my hacksaw blade in the middle of this. That's why we're going to have some clips here, but let's go ahead and fly through this. So we're uh, done with our uh, cut here, so now all I'm showing you is that um, we're kind of lined up here. Um, and I'm making sure that I measured correctly. Um, so everything ended up going pretty well here. And now we're going to be doing our second cut. And, oh, drilling our holes. Yeah, I don't know what happened there. So what I'm doing is I'm measuring 12 and a quarter because that's what it is between both of the uh, lights towards to the center of the hole. Yeah, I don't know what happened there. My uh, screen froze, so that was a little bit hard to uh, audio over. So right now I'm looking for my little scribing tool. That way I can make a scribe, but I couldn't find it, so I just used a screw to kind of scratch the uh, surface of the metal so I know where I'm going. Then I'm going to get my tape measure, and from that mark that I just made, I'm going to measure back 12 and a quarter inches, and that'll give me my quarter inch on each side of overhang. 
um, that we accounted for with that half an inch because I measured half an inch past. So there's 12 and a quarter. Make another little scribe, and then we're going to drill our holes. Pretty simple. Um, if you know how to use a measuring tape, you'll be fine. So I'm just getting my drill ready. I ended up getting a chunk of wood to uh, put down on top of my wobbly ass table. I'm just using a little shitty card table. But at the same time, I still don't want to punch a hole through it because they're made just out of like literally cardboard. So we're just drilling our holes here. Nothing special. So watch this. <laughs> All right, and there are our holes, all drilled nice and nice, somewhat nice and nice. And I used the Ecotec eyelet bolts that came with the lights, and they worked out perfectly with this. Uh, it's about a little bit thicker than eighth inch uh, aluminum angle iron stuff, and I got plenty of threads. Uh, you'll see later on in the video, I actually ended up having to use a washer in between each one of them because I had too much thread. So here is where I'm showing you how they uh, lined up and everything went pretty decently. So here's this. And I'm just kind of test fitting. That's all I'm doing right now is just a quick test fit to make sure I measured right. If I didn't measure right, then I would have just kind of wobble, wobbled out those holes a little bit, but everything went pretty good. And I'm gonna test fit the screws little eyelets and this was a pain in the butt doing one-handed I used the tripod as much as I could which I got my tripod fixed I had to get a new bolt so I could uh, put the little carriage on to the uh, tripod so it's pretty nice having the tripod again and uh, there you go there's that first bolt and here's the second bolt going in oh yeah that's right this hole was a little bit small so I had a little bit of trouble getting the uh, the bolt in so I just kind of wiggled it in and now it goes in just fine. So this uh, first part came out pretty nice. Okay, we're not going to be using these eyelets for anything but I had them with the lights and there it is. There is the first piece of angle iron installed. So we're done with this piece. I left them loose that way I had a little bit of uh, wiggle room to adjust things as I needed it as I went along. Well, there it is. Not the cleanest thing in the world, but it is what it is. And I just did the exact same steps for the back piece, except I used four eyelids and I'm showing you here, you can see the, uh, the, the washers underneath there. And I used all four bolts all the way across. Um, so there's two on that light and two on the other light. And then I have the two up front. Um, give it a little bit of extra rigidity. And as the lights are hanging now, they're uh, they're solid. The, the angle iron's not bending or anything like that. So it's doing really well. And there you go, Ecotech Marine. Running across, Ecotech Marine. And there's those. I was trying to get a close-up shot of the washers. I did end up having to use those for using some spacers because I just had a little bit too much wobble happen in there and the, uh, the angle iron wasn't really um, snug against the light fixture themselves. So that's why I had to use the washers. I was trying for some fancy camera work here, but I suck at it. And there I just used the last two um, eyelets at the front and that's where I'm gonna be hanging my suspension wire. So here we are, we're gonna start making our loop for the lights right here. I'm just going to thread it through the back, pull it all the way to the front, and then loop it to the front eyelet. As you can see here. And then we're just going to loop it through the front. And then kind of pull it tight. And then I'm just kind of eyeball measuring this here. And this is where we're going to use our first uh, Dana clip. So I'm just going to slide that on there and I had two spots where I could put the, the Dana clip or wire through the Dana clip. So I'm sliding this one through first, then I'm going to finish my loop, 
and then I'm going to cut this, and then the other end I'm going to put through the other hole on the Dana clip. We're just kind of sliding that one in, and we'll get the other end, and we're going to pull these tight, and these are going to be like our front to back. Uh, this one's not going to be used. I could have got those uh, those fittings that you just crimp the wire together, but I didn't. I don't have the tool for it, so I didn't get it. But that second Dana clip that we put on that only has one line going through it right now is what we're going to use for our suspension loop, and that's how we're going to be able to adjust these things forward and back. And you'll see that in the uh, in some later on shots here. So right now I'm just kind of eyeballing it, seeing if I like it or not. And that's how we're going to adjust it right there. You saw me slide them back and forth. They have little uh, like levers on them. You just pull them and you're able to make adjustments. So we're going to move on to the next light. All right, so right here is I'm putting together the uh, ceiling mount. I'm going to be using these D-rings. And these I actually found in the picture hanging area of Home Depot. So we're going to use those ones. I got the ones that were uh, heavier duty. And we're just going to go ahead and put it together. We're going to put the D-ring on first. And then we're going to put the little wing nut on and get ready to install it into the ceiling. So just putting it together real quick. And give you a quick shot at the end of all this, what they look like when they're done. Voila, that's what it looks like. All right, so here I measured the uh, ceiling. I used a plumb drop. Um, that's basically just a string with a weight, and that's how I got my marks on where I'm gonna hang it. So here, we're just uh, hanging the fixture. I'm drilling the holes and uh, putting up the wing nuts or the toggle bolts into the ceiling. And you just wanna make sure that you get those wings to completely open up in the ceiling, so I, uh, I kind of pressed them in and then jiggled them around to make sure that those uh, wings opened up all the way because I definitely don't want those to fail with uh, my lights hanging on them and I don't want my radions falling into the tank. So that's uh, that there. And um, this is what they look like when they're done. The hole is covered up by the D-ring uh, flange so I don't see an, an ugly hole. It's not the prettiest thing in the world. I could have definitely, you know, done something to make it look prettier, but I did not. So this is what they look like. And we're going to do our suspension wire next. So in this here, I'm getting my picture wire, the 100-pound test um, suspension wire. I put it through the D-ring, and I'm bringing it through on this uh, Dana clip here. So that's the, uh, the, the hole we had open. I'm putting another Dana clip here, and this is going to be the one that is going to adjust our light level, uh, our height off of the tank water. So... I'm just pulling down the rest of the loop and I'm going through that second area here on the Dana clip and we are officially suspending our lights. I did the first one already because um, I didn't see the need to do both of them on video and now as you can see here I'm adjusting the tilt and here I'm just kind of pulling these things and that's adjusting the height. You can see I'm just making little adjustments here and there, just kind of playing with it, familiarizing myself with it. And then uh, we'll go ahead and raise the lights up. You just got to pull it now and you're good to go. I'm trying to get that Dana clip for the light height level a little bit lower so I can reach it without a step stool. So that's what I'm doing here. And here's what they look like hanging. Pretty easy to adjust the height on these. And there you go. We have two radions hanging. And I'm just kind of showing you how I plan on running my wires down the back side of this uh, angle iron. And you can also see those other two eyelet bolts in the middle there um, for keeping the center of the lights kind of suspended. So yeah, that's how I plan on uh, running these lights. And here is what they look like lit up. Voila. Came out all right. Um, it's not the prettiest hanging kit in the world, but 
these are the materials that I have available to available to me readily. Um, I think in total, this entire hanging kit, if you had to buy these uh, items separately, would cost you 15 bucks. And the most expensive part probably being that uh, piece of angle iron. But this came out really good, guys, and uh, I got a really awesome vinyl banner made. So we'll see you guys in the next one.